Let us talk about human development index. This is taken from to Darrow and Smith chapter two. So HDI is something which is going to rank all countries in terms of low human development, middle human, de middle human development or high human development. So lowest human development is zero. And the highest one is one. So every country is going to be between the zero and one in terms of HDI. Uh, and there are three dimensions on which HDI is going to uh, rank these countries. One is longevity. That is life expectancy at birth. So this shows that if, uh, if in the country life expectancy is better, it means that people must be healthy enough. Uh, knowledge is the another criteria. For knowledge, they take up the weighted average of adult literacy and mean years of schooling. And they give a different weight for that. So for adult literacy, they give the weight 2 by 3. And for mean years of schooling, they give the weight 1 by 3. And then there is also standard of living per capita GDP adjusted for people. So for human development, you need all of this. You need income, you need health, you need education. And different countries are going to be classified into low, medium and high human development. So if uh, human development is going to be between 0 to 0 0.499, means the country, that particular country is in low human development category. Medium human development is from uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.799. And high human development is between 0 0.8 to 1. 0 0.8 to 1. Right. And then how do you calculate this human development index? So first is your income index. So for that, we are going to see for every country, we will have the income for every country. Now we have assumed some maximum income uh, and we have also assumed some minimum income. And we are going to create an index around it. How? So we will be taking up. So current income is the income of the country. Today's income of the country. And we also have assumed some values of the maximum and the minimum income threshold. So for the maximum income threshold, UNDP sets uh, Max at uh, $40,000 PPP, Purchasing Power Parity, right? Minimum is $100 PPP. So for income index, what do you do? Log of actual income, which is income of my country, minus log of minimum income, which we have assumed to be 100 upon log of maximum income which you have assumed to be 40000 minus log of minimum income which we have assumed to be 100 this is the way so for example if uh, income of my country is let's say uh, per capita income of my country is 1870 that is the actual income minus log of 100 upon log of 40,000 minus log of 100. Right. So once you calculate this, this will come out to be 0 0.49. So this is the income index. So we'll find out the different indices, income index, health index, uh, and education index. And then we'll take the simple average of these. Then comes your life index. So for life index also, we will have some life expectancy at birth for my country. We have also assumed minimum life expectancy at birth. That is 25 years. We have also assumed maximum life expectancy at birth. Let us say that is 85 years. Right. So country's life expectancy, let us say my country's life expectancy is 63. I'm assuming that. Minus minimum life expectancy what is that 25 upon maximum life expectancy minus minimum life expectancy so this thing comes out to be 0 0.64 so if you look at it carefully what is being done so the numerator is telling me how far my life expectancy is is far away from minimum life expectancy and how far 
maximum life expectancy, the country which is having maximum life expectancy, that is placed from the country which is placed at the minimum life expectancy. Right. So the ratio of that is that this index is. For education index, you have two indices which have to be calculated. So one is adult literacy index, another is gross school enrollment index. Uh, so for an adult literacy index, may it is given two by three weight and gross school enrollment is given one by three weight. Adult literacy index of VA. So what we are assuming is zero is the minimum value. 100 is the maximum value. It is in percentages. So nothing could be less than zero and nothing could be more than 100 in terms of the percentages. So we're going to assume that. So adult literacy index would be, let us say my country's adult literacy is 41. 41% 41 of the population is literate. Minus minimum adult literacy is 0% upon, right? 100 is the maximum adult literacy. Minus 0 is the minimum adult literacy. So once you calculate this, this comes out to be 0 0.41. Right. Gross enrollment. So it includes uh, enrollment into primary, secondary, tertiary, even adult return, adult returning students. Right. So all of that is in the gross enrollment. Uh, so let us say that is uh, actual gross enrollment ratio for my country is 57. Minus 0 0%. That is the minimum. For some country, it will be, I mean, there's no country which will have zero, but we're just assuming that way. 100 is the maximum. Everyone is enrolled. Minus zero, that is 0 0.57. How do we get the combined education index? We give two by three weight to the adult literacy index, which is 0 0.41. And we get, give one by three weight to gross enrollment, which is this guy. So this thing comes out to be 0 0.46. Right. And when we have to find out the, the HDI, so what do we have to do? We have all the three indices with us, income, life, and education index. So what we do is we just, we take the simple average of these three. So income index was 0 0.49. Life index was 0 0.64. Education index is 0 0.46 divided by 3. So that thing comes out to be 0 0.53. So according to this, my country is going to be placed in somewhere in middle human development. Right? This is not necessarily for India. I've just taken an example which is given in the book itself. Right? But you have to understand one thing. It is not that you will always have, if the countries, they are having low income, they will always have low HDI also. No, not necessary. There can be countries which can have low income, but they can still have very high HDI. They might be doing very well in education or they might be doing very well in, in health. So just because there are income gaps, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, you will always have... Uh, uh, health and education gaps also. So countries who might not be earning much, but they might they may be doing very well in terms of health and education. That is possible. Uh, but this also tells you something that if you invest in human capital, it is going human capital care, health, education. So if you make uh, life of the person healthy, if you make him more educated, one, human development is also going to improve. And at the same time, income is also going to improve. One of the drawbacks of, uh, of HDI is that it is only taking into account the quantity, not the quality. Uh, so, um, for example, if there is an extra year in healthy functional life, so for example, we take up life expectancy, right? And we say that in case of the country has more life expectancy, that is better. You can have an extra year of life being healthy 
or you can have an extra year of year of life being ill both of them are not same so you cannot just equate these i mean you and this hdi is not taking into account the quality differences you get the point just because people have all i mean people have completed their years of education maybe 18 years or whatever it doesn't mean that they have got quality education no so it is only taking into account the quantity uh, uh, but not the quality right so you need to read the book also side by side so i've given you a crisp note for this uh, i hope it was useful to you thank you beta